Hey, 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 guys. Oh, my goodness. I know if you've been following this series, then you're like, I don't know where she found all these powerful men and the messages that they are sharing. But thank you, thank you, thank you. I know because you've been sending me the messages, mm -hmm. right? I'm excited mm -hmm. to bring you this Boys to Men series because mm -hmm. I think it's about time that we get back to highlighting some of the men who are really putting some positive and powerful messages out into the world that you may not have known already and that you can definitely connect with. I'm super excited. You know what this is, the Speakeasy Podcast with your host, Altavis Pelzer, and our next guest that is about to come on. Man, I've been connected with him for a couple years now and seeing some mm -hmm. of the powerful things that he's been doing. And I know that he has a message for you. So a good morning. Yes, good morning, okay. sister. How are you? I'm doing well. So introduce Beautiful. yourself to the audience and then we'll dive into today's topic. Certainly. Well, um, Haki, Haki, I'm me, H-A-K-I-A-M-I, the success scholar. So it's just great to be here. Um, born and raised in Baltimore. So uh, so I'll just open with that and let you, you know, go into some questions. Most definitely. So one of the first questions that we're going to dive into is what is a father or a dad story that has impacted your business? Mm, okay. Well, certainly. I mean, I'll just share, you know, even in my personal experience, um, I, you know, I didn't come from necessarily directly a family that were a father per se or a grandfather or uncle that were um, entrepreneurs. My father was a postal worker. Um, my uncle actually, you know, you can say he's an, an entrepreneur because he owns, he drives his own truck. So, um, but you know, generally speaking, uh, not having that directly uh, impacted me to certainly look at that and keep an open mind early enough to know that, okay, regardless of where, you know, if you have to have a particular occupation, you have to really think like an entrepreneur, even whatever job that you have, there are various skills that you obtain from that that can translate into a uh, an entrepreneurial background and so i would say that you know everyone has uh meant people around them that are doing different business things you just have to open your mind to to look around even if young men do not necessarily have them directly you know if you look astute astutely enough you can find individuals who may be those examples for you just like the whole rich dad poor dad scenario where <laughs> you know one didn't have a, a dad that was an entrepreneur and so you have to develop that so I, I would say for me it wasn't like I had someone directly but you know just just searching intentionally uh to for people that um that can that can share their story was was a blessing for me I love that you said being that intentionality because that intentionality mm. really does hit home for so many people when mm -hmm. it comes to, you know, diving into the education piece of it. What did that look like for you? I know some people, it was the education of going to an actual institution, a university, a college. For others, it wasn't. So for you, what was that educational piece of it? Well, certainly um, for me, you know, I, I partially, I was, I say I was on the streets of Baltimore on some level. So I knew people who were engaged in certain entrepreneurial operations and opportunities that were not what we would like to be promoting, shall I say. So um, suffice to say, I knew enough about that life that it wasn't something that I thought we, you know, that I needed to pursue. I saw the dead end of that. So for me, you know, I was not necessarily the most academically astute, uh, but I was <laughs> smart enough, shall I say, to go into the United States Navy. So for me going in, you know, it allowed for me to ha keep open mind, meet different people, but early or just during my term in the military, I went on a reading type of binge where I knew that I needed to learn and educate myself. So 
Um, I knew that financial freedom was important. So I read things like the dictionary, the financial dictionary, cover to cover, uh, as well, you know, as I tell the story, I read a hundred books a year for, you know, throughout my military time as well as after that. So education for me was partially military as well as partially me developing my own awareness and, and finding, listening to, you know, various network marketers. I mean, that's where I got my start. So that, that sparked a stronger belief in myself that I saw people in you know making just like me you making various types of income through that personal self-development lifelong learning so that inspired me that you know regardless of your background you can you know make a come up through entrepreneurship mm, that process of becoming unstoppable right absolutely it, yeah. <laughs> it, it takes a whole lot sometimes mm -hmm. so unfortunately we we don't always hear it from the other side of it and that, that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited, you know, for you saying yes and, and some of the other men saying yes, because it's showing the full journey. It's showing, you know, that full mm -hmm. process. And I, I say that because uh, the military piece of it, there's still this kind of, uh, it's, it's a taboo topic sometimes in a mm -hmm. lot of homes and the structure that comes from it, the, you know, that that's that's all that's what they breed is that intentionality you know it yeah. that structure that strategy yeah. and so I, I thank you for saying that because there are still many who they're on the fence about what being in the service can really do for them absolutely uh, like absolutely. It, it goes so much further than the camaraderie it goes so much further than you know you having uh the finances to to pay for education, mm -hmm. and so you sharing that really does take it to a different level. So I appreciate you saying that, and yes. it, so it leads me to another piece, though, because you're also an author, mm -hmm. and I know that when it that process of becoming going from boys to men, mm. writing your story or writing anything in a book. I know what it looks like for women to go through the process, but what did that look like for you as a man, you know, going ahead and saying, you know what, I'm going to be deliberate and sit down and put this thing on paper. Right. Certainly. Well, I appreciate that. Um, you know, just, just me reading a lot of books, uh, you know, there was many people when they saw me out promoting other authors people would ask me like, well, where's your book? You know, it's, and you know, before that time, you know, you, you, you don't really give it a whole lot of thought. You just consider yourself, you know, passing along information that you believe is valuable. Uh, so, but I knew that after some time, people wanted to get my opinion, right? So for me, it was just like waiting for the opportune time and positioning myself to say, okay, I don't, you know, I don't, I didn't want to just make another book that someone else actually already have information out. Cause it's like, okay, you know, I, I just say, go ahead and read that. Um, cause I, that's how I honestly feel. But, uh, suffice to say, when I had the opportunity to partner with, uh, Dr. George Frazier, Les Brown, I realized that, uh, this would certainly, you know, get me, further along than just writing my own book. And, you know, it certainly has done that. Uh, and, you know, it really just made me grow up in, in the context of knowing like who I truly am. If these valuable, uh, empowered thinkers, entrepreneurs and speakers respect my work on some level enough to say that they're willing to partner with me, I knew that that's, that's, that's just the beginning of many great things to come. And so I say to others, young people, regardless of where you start, I mean, I'll, you know, people think like that I'm already a millionaire or something because it's like I walk around, you know, confident and it's not directly related to my uh, perceived positional power. It's my personal power. Uh, it's, it's just knowing that, you know, pr prior and previously in a past life, 
I wouldn't believe that I would even be wise enough to even know who these people are. You get it? And so I say that coming from, you know, that background to even being in, in heaven, thinking about being in a book with somebody, you know, that's a far achievement. And so I say, regardless of where you come from, you don't have to, you don't have to stay where you are. So that's what Mission Unstoppable is about that your failures are, in fact, can be a blessing. And so that's where we could continuous lifelong learning come into play. <laughs> Man, tapping into that personal power is so very yes. important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something that I love is that you're talking about the positioning. Yes. You know, a lot of times that's something that we struggle with because we don't understand the power within positioning ourselves in the right place. And so even in the Navy, you were positioning yourself for success. Right. Being in the book, you were positioning yourself, you know, um, amongst some who were at the level that you were trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And so for a young person that's listening in, or even a young, another man that's listening in right now, mm -hmm. and they're saying, well, how do I, what's the first thing I need for me to position myself for purpose and for success, what would you tell them is that first thing that they really need to tap into? Well, I, I would say the key is showing up, showing up 90% of, of one's success is showing up the ability, your availability determines your ability, right? Are you consciously, uh, being around individuals and uh, searching and uh, being in the presence of individuals who have have gone somewhere, who have done something, who are doing things that are focused, that are determined uh, to not, you know, maintain the status quo. Uh, so regardless of where we come from, again, you know, you have to work to, on yourself. You have to think and read and study and, you know, be healthy, exercise and you know, really just, just pray, however, whatever it is that you do, but you got to work, you got to not be conditioned, shall I say, by outside forces that, you know, want to keep you regular and average. You know, you got to think bigger than what the world expects of you and think bigger of yourself and you get out here and you partner with other, you know, wise, empowered people. And that's how you grow. So that's where, what I would say, sometimes it's not about you, it's about your team. And that's why, one of the reasons why I'm so confident because I know that I have people that I can call that will take my call, that respect me and, and know that I'm bringing something to the table, that I'm an asset. So that's what it's about, being an asset and creating assets. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh my goodness. I hope y'all wrote that down. <laughs> Be an asset and create assets. I Amen. need y'all make sure. I hope y'all caught that. There was a moment you may have to read. Go ahead, <laughs> rewind it back and listen to it again. Mm -hmm. Get that all the way down deep within you. Right. Because uh, for so long, we've been taught that we weren't an asset. We've been mm -hmm. taught that we weren't valuable. Mm -hmm. And when we show up as the asset, man, we won't just fall for anything. We won't just say yes to anything and absolutely. we'll position ourselves for success. Absolutely. I absolutely mm -hmm. love that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my Thank goodness. You. <laughs> mm -hmm. right, right, right. Uh, let them know how they can connect with you online. Uh, and also if they want to reach out to you for more information to work with you, how they would do that as well. Certainly. Well, I first say success scholar, H A K I.com. I'm a success scholar. I'm on, um, that's, that's my website. I'm on Instagram, Success Scholar One, number one. Instagram, Success Scholar, um, Hakish Kwame, or Success Scholar on Facebook, you can find it. Uh, but also, um, oh, I do a radio show on Fridays, um, 10, 10 a.m., Fridays, 4.30 p.m. to, to 4.30 to 5.30. I've been doing that for the last six months, so... Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, I'm just organizing. Um, I got promoted on the central committee. I'm the treasurer and I'm the secretary for the Maryland Legislative Black Caucus Foundation. 
So I just give out my phone numbers, uh, 410-209-9687. I got a lot of YouTube clips where I was, you know, on eLife Media. So hundred, well, over a hundred interviews that I did with Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, George Frazier, Les Brown's children, uh, so many other people. So you got a lot, a lot of clips out there. So, um, so things are happening. <laughs> Absolutely love it, guys. This whole series is yes. one that you should be sharing out with your children. You should be sharing out with grandchildren. Meet, you. Listen, your nephews. Listen, mm-hmm. the the people down the street, because it's a it's time for us. Like we are in the perfect positioning for mm-hmm. us to elevate. We're in the perfect yeah, positioning and timing for us to be able to achieve greatness and, and do some amazing things and come out of this even better than what we went in. Amen. You know, it may have shifted where we were, but guess what? We can still be great. And so mm-hmm. I want you to know and understand that beyond a shadow of a doubt, that part is most important. So with that mm-hmm. being said, I am out to be spelled your voice manager thank, thank you, you for joining yes, us yes, for this yes. particular episode and series guys make sure you join the conversation bit.ly forward slash world voice community join the free facebook group we would love to hear how you felt about this particular series this particular episode and until next time don't forget to press it out peace, peace and blessings out. thank you